It's been an absolutely amazing day in London. Look at this sky. It's so incredible today. I should just be outside, not practicing. Let me think what else I can use to warm up. That's you should do some short pieces. Like what? I know it's just very, very short ones. I said fill the kettle and he really did and then he boiled it and it overflowed everywhere. Lucy, yeah. come here please. Mac, you have to fill it to the maximum line, not right to the top because as it gets hotter it expands and then it goes everywhere. Oh. Only so you know. Back to my thirds. Forgot how to shift. Oh, it's the chicken titties. sign when you find your own playing funny. <laughs> It's really quirky today. I'm loving it. That's not even the actual sun shining in. It's the sun behind my building hitting the window opposite and bouncing back off. Wait, look, it's so nice. I have to show you. So look at this. It's actually far, far too bright. Wow. I'm just seeing spots now. It's actually brighter bouncing off the window than it is on the other side of the house where it's shining directly in the window. Look at this. Super unfocused today. Are you good? I just keep looking out the window. I just want to go outside. I'm going to go outside. So look at this. I love this building, and at the moment, it's probably overpriced luxury flats. But it looks a little bit like the Royal Academy where I studied on Marrowbone Road. And I really dream to turn it into a music school, like pre-academy. Look at that. love this neighborhood. People quite often leave stuff out for other people to just take if they're done with it instead of taking it to the charity shop. Ooh. Oh, wow. I do like these, funnily enough. I had a really nice walk. Um, so, um, C major is done. G major. Yes, G major. All my students are always mystified by the Carl Flush, but they don't understand how it's organized in the keys. And it is hard to find what you want in, the, in it because there's just 
every key imaginable. Basically, it's it's done according to the circle of fifths, in case any of my students are watching. So you start at the beginning with C major, and then it goes forwards through the flat keys. So one flat, two flats, three flats, all the way to the middle. And at seven flats, it crosses over into the enharmonic seven sharps, and then it goes backwards through the sharps, back, 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 until you get to A, D, G at the back. So if you're looking for a sharp key, like one sharp or two sharps, you have to look at the back. And if you want a flat key, one flat, two flats, you look at the front. And if you want a key signature, a crazy key signature with loads of sharps or flats, it's probably somewhere near the middle. shorter than the other fingers so it always gets to the string later that's why it doesn't sound together and I'm really trying to get it there first but it doesn't yet it's really weird when you play thirds in tune with each other the violin makes a really weird overtone noise like a third note buzzing in the background that you can hear and it's really weird it's like it's the kind of I don't know if you can hear it it or not through the, the thing it's this kind of sound like the when the wind goes through a fireplace or a grate um, and it makes this weird whooshing sound it's really cool but it, it, it it's a bit buzzy it does kind of hurt me I just ran really fast past my window wearing a mask and he's probably just running for a train or something but because of the mask I just thought oh my god I was on a train on the overground train once going going somewhere in between lockdowns and everybody was wearing not just a mask but also gloves and it was so weird I felt like I was like on my way to a serial killer convention or something <laughs> but I'm going to move on to D. Though I'm really surprised how much I'm enjoying this. The reason I like it, I think, is because it makes me do a good hand position. And because when you double stop for a long time and you start to really find the tuning with your open strings, then, then the violin just starts to resonate differently and I, found my, I find my sound quality gets better as well. Funny story, when I was at the Royal Academy doing my postgrad, I don't know if I was just in a particularly disorganized phase or what, but for some reason it had like passed me by that there was a technical exam approaching. I was too busy playing chamber music and all sorts of fun things. I kind of knew there was a technical exam, but I thought, oh, it'll just be a couple of studies or whatever. Like two weeks before, I was talking to another student and I was like, so what scales do we have to do? And she was like, all of them. I was like, what do you mean all of them? She was like, all of them. <laughs> like, 
all of the Carl Flesh. They could ask you anything in any key. They could ask you three octaves, four octaves, double stops, chromatics, dim, doms, like, like anything. You, like you have to know the whole Carl Flesh book. And I was like, you are kidding me. And I was like, but that's impossible. Like it takes like a year to learn. Like, I've got two weeks, what am I going to do? And I freaked out a little bit, but I didn't have a choice. So I've never been so tired or so committed. I got up at like 5.30 and I would just practice. God, my housemates must have hated me. I literally was practicing from like 7 a.m. till midnight every day. I'd do like two hours, take a break, to do two hours, like recover my hand, like do another two hours, take a break, recover my hand. But I would, I just practiced solid all day for two weeks and learned a lot. And I hated it at first, but at the end of the two weeks, I A, could play them and I got a really good mark. I just discovered, my God, I could really play the violin. Like all my repertoire became so much easier and my sound improved and everything. And I was, I was just completely sold on them from that. That's why students, that's why I harp on about scales all the time. <laughs> comfortable on a, on a string instrument. There's not very many open strings to it. I notice a tendency to get a bit cocky after I've played one key quite well. Then I just go faster and whiz through the other one and then play really out of tune. If I was doing a long day of practice, this would be about the moment when I would take a nice long break because my concentration is just gone. I'm like totally zoning out. You could actually do more harm than good with that kind of practice. So I either have to pull it together or stop. What a catastrophe. I'm doing the vibrato thing again. I've given it, it's like my poker tell. I don't even know that I know that I'm out of tune and then I look back and realize I vibrated that note and I vibrated that note and I, my subconscious reacts so quick to go, out of tune, quick, vibrate. <laughs> Just, I don't even know I'm doing it. Good to know my subconscious is listening though, because I'm not. <laughs> 